Hello, welcome to Tim Anderson Horse Training. Today we're going to be working with Spade here. Spade just came in uh, a day or two ago and what they told me was that he is five years old and the owner that rides him, it's a teenage girl, looks like maybe high school age, they're not really getting along and uh, not really sure in what way they're not getting along. I figure it's probably a combination of being a, a younger horse and maybe a rider that doesn't know how to work with a younger horse. But we're going to work with Spade today and I'm going to see what he tells me. I am a firm believer when a horse comes in that I'm going to, I'm going to observe what they do, I'm going to assess, and then I'm going to react to what they do as far as improving those uh, behaviors. So I'll see what behaviors he's doing and uh, kind of assess him and come up with a game plan, how we're going to move forward with him. So we'll start off by coming into the stall. And if you saw my video with the halflinger, I want them to present themselves at the door for me to halter him. And he, he's done a pretty good job of that. He's a little bit more into my space than what I would like. But he's not trying to push through to go out the door. So uh, I like what we're getting so far. He is a little closer than I would like. I do feel like he's into my space. So that's something to take note of. And I'm a real firm believer in the horse is going to tell you, that, that little thing right there, that's what I'm getting to. The horse is going to tell you ahead of time what's going to happen, what he's going to do, how he's going to act. Many owners miss those little things, those little conversations. If you watch horses in a pasture, they're constantly having little small communications between them in the pasture. And when you start interacting with the horse in a stall, the horse immediately starts with those interactions. They're herd animals, and they're constantly going to interact with you. And... See how I keep, he's getting into my space. I just kind of keep pushing him out of my space. That's the little things that I'm talking about. That's the things that t he's communicating to me that he's okay with getting into my space. And now I see he's turned his head that way. Not wanting to push his head that way. And you see him lip at my hand right there. He could be a little bit nippy also. So that's the little communications that I'm talking about. Now he's trying to get a little bit pushy. Let's go ahead and put the halter on him. These are those little communications that you should be paying attention to with your horse. Don't miss out on the little things. That's how horses become big problems. People miss out on those little communications, the little things that the horse tells them, and the horse keeps escalating. In the herd structure, you should always be at the top and your horse should be below you. And what gets you into trouble is the horse is constantly, it seems, take a step towards me. That's one of those little things. That's a big deal. So the horse is constantly trying to figure out where he is in my herd and our herd structure between the two of us. That's just natural for the horse. They want to know where they are in that order. So the first thing he's going to do is he's going to push on me a little bit just to see if I give. See right there, I pushed on him. He did not move his feet. That's a big thing to take note of. I've had to give him a pretty good push there to get him to move his feet. Right now, we're kind of in a situation. He's pushing towards me trying to see if I'll move my feet. I'm trying to see if he'll move his feet. We're establishing our herd right here. Now what I'm going to do to go ahead and bring this to a situation where I want it to be, I don't want, to, I don't want his mouth right there by me. I give him a chance. He, he keeps putting his mouth close. Well, if he can't get him into my space and make me move, the next thing that's going to come is he's going to take a nip and see if he can make me move. Little things. Those little things are big things if you don't pay attention to the little things. So in order to go ahead and establish 
what needs to be established here is I'm going to make him move his feet. So what I'm going to do, let's, I'll go this way since there's more room over here. And just make him move his feet that little bit. Oh, he moved step forward into my space. I'm going to make him move his feet again. Back up. Good boy. I'm not going to pet him here. I'm not trying to reward. I'm not trying to reward a behavior. I'm trying to establish our relationship and our pecking order right here. If I pet him, I'm going to be inviting him back into my space. I don't want to do that. See the difference in his head right here? He's not bringing his head to me challenging my personal space like he was a minute ago and he's not stepping towards me either that's the little things those little things are important now he's thinking about it well maybe i can challenge the space to the head coming to me getting really close into my space again so i'm going to move his feet again don't have to be mean i don't have to be aggressive all we have to do is move his feet. I have a, to establish with him, has brought his head to me again, I have to establish with him that I am his leader and I dictate what goes on. There we go. Now he's actually took a step away from me right there. Now we're making progress already. His mind is in a much better place than it was just a minute ago. He's trying to go see what the camera is now. His mind is in a much better place. He's still creeping into my space. I'm going to back him up. And I'm going to back him up again. Move his feet. Now we're establishing a relationship between the two of us. Those little things that people skip, they don't pay attention to, and it brings out so many big problems. I am a big opponent of hand feeding horses treats. Maybe 75% of the horses out there you can feed treats to and it'll never be a problem. And there's so many owners out there that says, oh, I feed treats to my horse and my horse is an angel. Well, maybe it is. Or it may be that your horse is telling you something and you're not paying attention to it. And it may be that you can feed treats to your horse and it never become an issue. But the horses that it is an issue, it's a big issue. He's testing the space again. Testing his limits, just, just like an adolescent person testing their limits, see what they can get away with. I'm giving him plenty of time here to think about what he's doing and make his decisions. Good boy. Much better back up there. Now I have established, oh, I don't want his head right up against me again. He has already showed me that he will nip. Because when I first walked in here, he did a little mouthy thing on me. Now you have to be able to tell the difference between wanting to take a nip you saw a minute ago i'll play a replay for it here that's different than like a baby mouthy thing where i'm a baby that is a submissive thing doing the i'm a baby mouthing thing taping a nip is a aggressive action good boy all right so i'm gonna get him out of the stall i'll work him in the aisle way just a little bit and then I'll put him in a wash rack and brush him down a little bit.
started out better. He didn't immediately get into my space, but then he kind of creeped into it. We'll back him into. Now we're going to come out of the stall and see what we do. Now I am never going to lead a horse with the horse right here next to me. I'm not leading him at this point. He's leading me. See him ears? He has immediately went into he's in charge of me position. I'm going to make him move his feet. Back up. Back up. Right here, he's wanting to push his shoulder into me. The shoulder needs to go that way because I'm going that way. Get the shoulder out of my space. Get the shoulder, there we go. Shoulder out of my space. That's much better. Good boy. Back up. Much better. Much better. Don't want his face on me. That could become a big problem. I'm not going to let any horse get their face that close to me. This is the first time that he's been in the wash rack here. He just came in. This is actually the first time he's been out of the stall since he came here. Back up some more. Back up a little more. Then push his shoulder into me. I'm going to push it away. I'm not going to let him do anything to come into my space. Anything that's going to challenge my position as being above him in the herd. So I'm going to run a brush over him. See how he does for that. And it's not that I'm wanting to see that he can be brushed. I want to see how he behaves when he's brushed. The little things. See his ears forward and he's looking out there. He's not paying me a bit of attention. That I don't care for. Hey, over here. Hey, hey. Move your feet. Move your feet. Over here, there. See that ear come back? I need his attention on me. Even though he's getting his first look from inside the wash rack, doesn't matter. He should be looking to me for confidence. He should be looking to me as his herd leader to tell him what to do. You ever seen a group of horses in the pasture? There's that one herd leader that decides whether are we going to spook or are we going to stand here when they see something new. I am the herd leader. He needs to be looking to me to see what do we do. This is giving me a pretty good indication of what the problem is with him. He's lacking a person as a herd leader. So that's what we have to establish. First thing I'm going to do is work with him. Get him in the mindset of a person is my herd leader. And then I'm going to work with his, his rider. and get her in the position of his herd leader. Little things. It's easy to see a horse that's got his ears pinned back to his head and teeth bared. When I went into the stall a minute ago, 
He didn't do any of that, but I got the same reaction. A little bit of a nip. Well, that little bit of a nip can become a big problem if you don't pay attention to the little things. That's what I would like for you to get out of this video. Pay attention to those little things before they become a big thing. So let's pick his feet up. I have not done his feet. I have no idea how he's going to be. He needs his feet trimmed. All right. What is he telling me right there? He knows I'm asking for the foot, but he don't want to give it to me. See how he's getting it out real forward? That licking right there is not licking of acceptance. He didn't give me that foot and said, okay, I understand you can have my foot. He's licking because he just won that foot situation. So let's do this again. See where that foot went? It went that way. He's not wanting to give me the foot. Now I'm going to hold this foot kind of high. I want him to know that I control this foot. Just like when I made him move in the stall, made him move his feet, I'm doing the same thing right here. By picking it up kind of high and holding it, I'm letting him know that I'm ruling his feet. He got his mouth over here, and what did he tell me a little bit ago? He told me if he gets his mouth over to me, he would take a nip at me. So I pushed his face away. I'm not going to let him get his face in a position where he could take a nip at me. And I give him his foot back when I say he can have his foot back. Now we're going to do the other front foot. When I go to pick it up, let's see if he gives it to me or if he pulls it away. Right there, he's wanting to tell me that I don't deserve his foot. I got it. I'm going to hold it up high. It's easier for me to have more leverage when it's high. That takes the leverage away from him. If it's really close to the ground, then he has the leverage. He needs his feet trimmed pretty bad, but I'm not going to put my farrier in a position to where he has to train on the horse. That's not fair for you to do with your farrier. It's not your farrier's job to train your horse. I hear so many people talk about, well, I can't get a farrier to come out, or my farrier came once and won't come back. Well, might be a reason for that. You might need to train your horse a little better. There we go. All right, now. I'm going to go back foot next. We'll see how that goes. With him, him being willing to nip at me a little bit ago, he might be willing to kick at me, so I'm going to make sure I stay in a safe position. We'll see. There's a lot of things he could do. We'll see what he does. What I need to do is I need to get it picked up and hold on to it and not let him have it back. Let him know that I'm in charge of his feet. That actually was pretty good. I bet you, by winning the battle with his front feet, it converted in his brain to his back feet. Good boy. Now we'll go around and do the other back foot. I'm going to push him over a little bit, give myself a little room. Push over. Push over. There we go. Good boy. Now I'll see what he does with this foot. Actually pretty good. I'm happy with that. Feel like I got something done with him all around. Mainly mentally. 90% of horse training is mental. 10% is physical. 
Once you train their mind to be accepting and willing to do what you ask them to do, the task is easy. It's the mind that you have to train first. So that's what we accomplished today, was working on his mind. Even though it seemed really small with the things that we did, spacing the stall and picking up his feet, brushing on him, leading over here, those were all small things, but mentally establishing the relationship between the two of them, those were really big things. So that's going to be it for today with Spade. You'll see me do a lot more with him in the future. Until next time, thank you for watching.